Good morning, friends, and thank you for joining the session today. You know what? You all have made a choice to join the session today, and that is what the session today is about. And it is by these choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, that determines the future course of our life. So, most of the choices that we make are done unconsciously, and the endeavor of our session today will be to bring more awareness to the choices that we make, so that we can make them consciously, and then in that process, alter the direction of our life. I'll also like to hear from you if you have any other expectation from the session today. Uh, if you have any expectation, please type in the chat or unmute and speak. Uh, you could. I would uh, really urge you to keep the session today very interactive because it's a very powerful session. And we will be able to derive maximum value uh, from in the session by interacting and asking questions. Sorry, I have got a bad cold, so uh, this, that may disrupt. So I, I think most of you know me. Uh, only Pintu is joining the session for the first time. Uh, I started Mindful Living in 2018. Prior to that, I worked in the corporate sector for 25 years. Um, and our objective in Mindful Living is to impact the lives of 1 million working professionals and help them become healthier, happier, and wealthier. Coming to the topic today, this is what our life uh, entails, you know, making choices. And this is an endowment which is uh, unique to human beings. Human beings have this ability to make choices, but most of the times we are making these choices unconsciously. And there are two main processes of making the choice. One is automatic and fast, and the other is conscious and slow. And let us understand a little bit about these two different ways of making choices. The one which is automatic is uh, driven by our subconscious mind. This is a result of the programs that have been installed in our mind. And conscious and slow is driven more by the uh, prefrontal cortex where it requires deliberate thinking. And there is a reason why it is like that. During the millions of years of our evolution, you know, today we are very uh, fortunate that we have got uh, food on our table, you know, we live in secure houses, but it was not always so. When uh, our human history is about 6 million years old and 5.9 uh, out of those 6 million years, we lived, or 5.99 out of those 6 million years, we lived in jungle. And where things were uncertain and things were uh, scarce, you know, the food was, food, water was not so easily available. And it was dangerous environment because, you know, we lived with wild animals, you were attacked, uh, uh, or, you know, the other tribes could attack us if not wild animals. And in those situations, you couldn't wait uh, to uh, process the information logically. Uh, so if you see a lion, uh, you know, either you fight or flight, uh, you know, that, and that's a split second decision you need to make. Uh, if you're thinking, standing there and thinking whether this lion is well-fed or not, uh, you know, whether it will attack me or not, you know, in that, then in that process of thinking and evaluating, we would have lost our lives. Or if you see a snake, you know, you're not thinking and you're not standing there and thinking whether this snake is non-venomous, which 90% of the snakes are, or it is venomous. So all that thinking process was bypassed. You know, we our brain installed programs in our mind, and these programs helped us uh, survive uh, over the uh, millions of years. There was another reason why we made these programs was it was to become more efficient. Because brain, even though it is only about 1.4 kgs, uh, you know, it hardly is what less than 5% or 2% of our body weight. Uh, but the energy it consumes is about 20 to 25% of the calories that we consume. So 
the nature didn't want brain to think so much because it that consumes more energy and it didn't want it to be thinking consciously because that slows down the process and would have put our survival at stake so that is why these programs got installed and the, you know that's how we make most of our choices during the day there is an advantage to it like if i see my mom i don't have to think consciously that she is my mom instantly i recognize her as my mom but you know there are some disadvantages also which we will see as we go to the next slide and see some of the choices what are some of the choices that we make on a day to day basis and whether they are automatic uh, so if you think they are automatic type a if you think they are conscious uh, type c and then let's look at some of the uh, choices we uh, make on a day to day basis now brushing teeth is this a or c please type in the chat so a this is a right it's an automatic choice we get up and the first thing we we don't even pay attention to it uh, we just go and brush our teeth so this help this this makes us efficient we don't have to think every day when i get up in the morning what should i do should i shave first or should i brush first or bathe first no, that decision making process is bypassed so it saves energy it saves time right let's look at some more food that we eat is this automatic or conscious <laughs> conscious sometimes and some of these could be automatic sometimes conscious sometimes like we get up in the morning i need my cup of coffee right so that's an automatic thing till the time i have my coffee my brain will not start functioning or it could be tea for some other people or whatever you know sometimes uh, we do this unconsciously like we sit in front of tv and we keep eating we don't realize how many bowls of popcorn we have had how many cold drinks we have had or you know we just keep eating and drinking chips so we are eating unconsciously we, you know so or uh, we are not uh, paying attention to the food that is there in front of us you know we are not eating mindfully uh, we are not paying attention to the taste of the food or you know we just uh, or we are working on the laptop many busy executives they are working on the when i used to live in gurgaon i would see people are driving and you know they are taking care of the kid who is sitting on the next seat and they are eating their sandwich while going to work you know so you're not eating really consciously you're not paying attention you're just gulping the food the clothes uh, we dress uh, you know the clothes we choose to dress for some people it's conscious they pay a lot of uh, 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 attention to it some people uh, you know just make a the process that i'll all only wear white so no thinking uh, there you know just wear white all the wardrobe is white or some people will uh, dress in black only so no thinking you save time you become more efficient so just apply these things in your life and become more aware now uh, this may not have major impact okay eating may have but the clothes may not have it may have may not have depending on the kind of profession you have so these may be small impact but let's look at some more uh, exercising now this is automatic or conscious or both so if it is automatic type a if it is conscious type c or it is both you know and sometimes you may find that initially it is conscious but then later it becomes uh, automatic so when it comes to developing habits uh, you know initially uh, you know it will take effort every day i have to get up put on my shoes put on my clothes go to the gym or go for a walk or go for yoga but if i am uh, you know then after that i don't have to think you know oh it's morning 6 o'clock get up brush my teeth go for i'll request everybody to mute themselves if you're not speaking so it can be conscious and unconscious so see how that applies in your life and we will see more of that uh, as we go forward <clears throat> career career is conscious or unconscious automatic or conscious okay can it be automatic also i'll give you some examples where uh, it is automatic yes thank you dayal ji uh, see i grew up in a steel township wahan pe sab engineer the so it was automatic decision ki engineer ke bete engineer hi banne wala hai doctor ka beta doctor hi banne wala hai 
वेन आई केम टू बॉम्बे फॉर माई एजुकेशन आई सॉ सी ए का बेटा सी ए बन रहा है ऑटोमेटिक वहां दिमाग ही नहीं लगाना मारे या सारे बच्चे एक स्कूल के आई आई टी जा रहे हैं कोई बच्चे इधर जा रहे हैं तो एक ऑटोमेटिक हो जाता है हर्ड मेंटेलिटी हो जाती है कि इसी तरह से करना है हमको ओके okay? उनका बच्चा ऐसा कर रहा है तुम भी ऐसा करो लाइक दैट यू नो बी इट बिकम्स ऑटोमेटिक बट इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजन मोस्ट पीपल डू इट कॉन्स टूडे देर आर मेनी मोर चॉइसेस पीपल आर वेरी कॉन्शियस अबाउट इट बट इन सम सिचुएशन एंड लुक एट दी इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दिस यू नो इफ यू आर चूजिंग टू बिकम एन इंजीनियर बिकॉज ऑल योर फ्रेंड्स आर बिकमिंग एन इंजीनियर यू नो वॉट इज द इम्पैक्ट इट्स गोट हैव ऑन योर लाइफ आपको बनना नहीं था बट पियर प्रेशर की वजह से आप इंजीनियर बन गए यू नो इस तरह से क्या इम्पैक्ट होता है या आप किसी के फैमिली में देखा सारे डॉक्टर हैं आपको इंटरेस्ट नहीं है आपको बनना था आर्टिस्ट या आपको रॉक बैंड शुरू करना था बट सारे डॉक्टर हैं तो कहीं से डोनेशन करके कुछ भी करके उसको डाल दिया डॉक्टर बना दिया उसका मनी नहीं है पेशेंट का क्या हाल होगा सो लुक एट दी चॉइसिस दैट वी आर मेकिंग एंड हाउ वी आर मेकिंग दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द कंपनी वी वर्क फॉर दिस अ वेरी फेमस कोर्ट यू नो हाउ यू विल बी फाइव ईयर्स हेंस will be determined by the books you read and the people you keep company with so are we choosing the books uh, that uh, you know we are reading are we choosing the company of the people right most of you i think are part of the mindful living community and you have chosen to be a part of this community so the kind of people you associate with the kind of books you read is going to determine the future so how much attention are we are we i am not saying fiction is bad i'm just talking like i am i reading fiction am i reading horror genre am i reading uh, mindfulness books am i reading books on leadership what am i choosing who are the people i am spending my time with am i just choosing my uh, you know just hanging out with people for the sake of it because i want to get accepted or i am choosing my people so in my coaching sessions i encourage people to choose uh you know whom they are going to network with whom they are going to mentor you know who are they are going to it's very very important because the who are your friends going to be because you are going to be like your friends there is no two ways about it so who are you choosing your friends carefully career we talked about it life partner you know another very important uh, decision how you are taking these decisions leadership style now when it comes to leadership style most of us get fixated in one style the you know so you are either democratic or autocratic or you know one way or the other you are but the best is you have you are able to flex your leadership style you know so what's your leadership style what's your operating style do you always get irritated when something unpleasant happens or you you can choose to be calm you know there are many different ways this plays out so look at the different choices uh, that we make how do we spend money and time now this is a great a uh, factor which uh, determines our future uh, and i would say uh, pay attention to how we spend time because that's what's going to determine your future more than the how you spend your money like time is capital uh, you know today is sunday morning we are about 20 people here uh, in this 21 people uh, you have chosen to invest your time in your learning you know i can assure you your future is going to be very very bright because you are choosing consciously where to spend your time you could have been lying down you could have been uh, you know the watching some tv some serial you could have been doing anything but you have chosen to come here and that gives me an idea so a lot of people come tell share with me ashish from the time we have got associated with mindful living you know a lot of good things are happening in our life and i know why because you are choosing to invest your time watching our videos you are choosing to interact with other fellow community members you are choosing to volunteer within the community so obviously you know how you spend your time is going to determine your future how you spend your money whether you are spending it uh, on uh, buying clothes which is not bad but you know what are you are you investing in learning what are you investing in another very important thing you know uh, like especially our because our elections are going to come next year are we going to vote and choose the government or are we going to stay at home and let you know other people go and vote and even in our society you know next week there are elections i am making sure uh, because i am not going to be there i am going to make sure that somebody goes you know i am going to do the process and make sure that somebody goes and votes on my behalf choosing the community uh, the members of your uh, uh, committee in the local society choosing the government this is a choice we make and if we choose not to make a choice that's also a choice 
But then we have to live with the consequences. That's what we're going to see. And one of the most important things which we don't pay attention to because of a mind as I was mentioning earlier, is conscious and subconscious. 90 to 95% of our mind is subconscious and we don't pay really, we don't choose our thoughts. And that is the reason our life remains the same as it is. Because 90% or more, psychologists say 90% or more of our thoughts are same every day. And that is the reason our life is also same every day. Unless we choose to change our thoughts, our life will not change. So how do we pay attention? That is what mindfulness is about. Paying attention uh, to your thoughts, paying attention to your emotions. So I'll pause here and I'll uh, you know uh, stop sharing to see if you have any questions or comments uh, before we proceed further. Uh, Shiji, uh, I think very good point over here. Yes. But you have made that, you know, I have also heard that if you do not, uh, because thought processes every time you are thinking in the same cycle, unless until you are going to change that, you are not going to develop. So help me to understand how we can do that. Yes, yes, yes. that's a very good question, Jogesh. By being mindful, we will do a small mindfulness exercise. Uh, but essentially, our thoughts are only in the, uh, so how do we, by rooting our attention to our breath, we will practice being mindful. So uh, hold on to your question. Uh, and in case it doesn't get answered by the end of the session, uh, we will revisit this question. But to, uh, to answer it briefly or theoretically, it is to root by, practice by rooting your attention to the breath. So typically what happens is when we try and uh, root our attention to our breath, uh, you know, our mind will wander and then we bring it back. Mind will wander, bring it back. And that process, we start developing awareness of our thoughts. So we'll, uh, I have a, one more uh, thought over here. When we do the mindfulness or meditation, we try to avoid the thoughts and try to focus or the mind should become the empty. When it is empty, it is not thinking about anything else. Now it's more important the, the vessel is empty, what you pour into it so that you know you start thinking on that direction. So that is two-step process actually. Very, very rightly said, uh, Jogeshi. We will, what we will do today is the first step process where we are just observing. We are not trying to empty. And in that process, we will develop the awareness. Thank you. So thank you for that question. Hold on to it. And we will revisit it towards the end of the session. Good morning, Rajiv. Good morning, Shruti. Good morning, Dayalji. Any, anyone, any questions or comments? Yeah, yes, I, I, I would like to. Yeah, good morning to all of you. Yeah, lovely to be a part of this beautiful session. Now, when we talk about the elections, like you know, when we try to take the charge of our life, like uh, I, even I fought the last uh, month the my society election, huge society. But then you come across a lot of resistance uh, because we are used to that. Like you said, the same mindset. Always we go above over it. Though I believe, frankly, that we lost the election, but we did dent to the to the extent of forty percent the new committee. Mm. So there we are facing a lot of resistance from not even from outside, but even from inside, because we are not used to that kind of a friction and this thing. Anything established already will create a lot of uh, fuss and uh, resistance. Yeah, yeah. So there we, uh, I just want to know, like to overcome that thing that takes a little uh, out of the book. Yeah. Now I understand, uh, Bayalji, that's a very beautiful question. And what I would, in the context of what we are discussing today, uh, you know, just reflect on it. What would you like to choose? Would you like to choose friction and new uh, order? Or would you like to choose comfort and the old order? You know, what yeah. are we choosing? Yes. <clears throat> no, I would uh, be focused on my ambition. Like, you know, though I may have lost the election, but I'm preparing for the next five year already now. And I'm going into the in-depth and going to the by society bylaws and getting my knowledge vast. So I'm making sure that next time I'll be very, <laughs> which I, I can with these lovely programs, I can definitely be a take charge of, uh, be uh, not a like you leader, but somewhere, <laughs> yes. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, 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 and we'll be yeah. happy to connect offline also and discuss how you could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you are our role model in being a leader, in fact. <laughs> Thank you. I'm only a follower, sir. Uh, so let's look at the chat. 
Good morning, Anjana. We are hardwired to multitask. Now we are total focus only on one aspect. That's everything. Yeah, so that's a very beautiful question, Anjana. Our brain actually can't multitask. You know, we think we are multitasking, but we are only doing one task. But, you know, it feels that we are doing many things at the same time. And also, there is another way to look at this. Some low order tasks, you know, like uh, something which be has become repetitive. Maybe we can do uh, uh, multitasking. Like I was giving the example of this. Uh, people, I, when I used to live in Gurgaon, I used to see people driving, talking on the phone, eating their sandwich, taking care of the uh, son or daughter whom they have to drop to the school, all doing together. So we think we are multitasking. Some of, some of the things which are repetitive and low level require low level thinking. Possibly multitasking is possible. possible. But uh, conscious thinking, high level, like, uh, you know, we need to focus. We need, and that's when the best results, best outcomes uh, come out. I don't know if that helps, but happy to discuss more. Yeah. Yes, Shruti, please. Good morning, Ashish. Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. Good morning. Since Thank we are you. talking about thoughts, there is something I heard yesterday which I really liked regarding thought. Uh, it's a, a suggestion by a psychologist. So, a relative of mine took a her child to a psychologist yesterday, a child psychologist or something. And that psychologist said something back to them. They, he said that when you want to change a thought, don't kill a thought with another thought. Mm. Kill that thought with some action. Mm. Somehow I just liked it that, okay, because all the time we are constantly trying to change our thoughts that, okay, let's change. let's And we replace it with another thought. Intend, uh, kill it with an action. So just thought I'll share it with everyone. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's move on. Uh, looking at the uh, emotions, uh, you know, most of our emotions are hardwired into us and we tend to react uh, to situations. You know, something, somebody says something nice to us, we feel very good. Somebody says something which is not so nice, you know, we, we feel repulsed. Uh, we, uh, we react to that situation and sometimes in that reaction uh, some uh, some undesirable things happen uh, like you know we see in the newspapers uh, mother denies a son money to buy a phone and he goes and murders everybody in the family i have lawyer friends and they tell me a lot of the crimes that take place is because uh, the person who committed the crime couldn't control himself and he just reacted you know, so we, we emotions may bhai jate hain, look, we are not able to pay attention and control our uh, situation. So what we can choose uh, in that moment is to bring mindful attention uh, to the uh, uh, to the situation and then respond rather than react to that. Uh, so that is what. That is how we can choose consciously, you know, whether it comes to our emotions, whether it comes to our thoughts, whether it comes to anything else in our life. You know, people go, uh, people go to a mall, they see something and they swipe their card, they buy, you know, so that's not conscious consumption. That is uh, just buying things out of habit, whether you need them or you don't need them. Or if you like something, you just keep eating without realizing that you, whether how much you should eat or not. So by bringing attention, uh, you know, we, we, we can um, become conscious and then direct our life in a way we want to. So I'll pause here and uh, we will do a small mindfulness exercise, which will focus our attention on our breath. And then we will, then you can take this exercise to your daily lives and then practice rooting your attention to the present, becoming aware of your thoughts. What we will practice now is about five to 10 minutes, but even one minute is very good. Thank you for sharing that, uh, the LG. That is very beautiful what the LG shared in the chat. That It's not the event that happens. It is our choice of reaction to the event which determines the outcome. And the beauty of this is, you know, each outcome will determine the next event. You know, so it, that's how our life either becomes a virtuous upward circle or it becomes a downwards a spiral. Yeah. Uh, wh what's your name? SS? Shamin. Sorry? Shamin. 
Shamil. Yes, Shamil. So that is exactly what you are going to do. Uh, thank you for that question. That's a very beautiful question. How do we practice it in life? So we're going to do a five to 10 minute mindfulness exercise uh, where we are going to focus our attention to our breath. And after that exercise, we will again revisit your question. Uh, I think this will help uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So everyone, uh, please sit with your neck and back in a straight line. Straight, but not stiff. Close your eyes gently. Chin parallel to the ground. Gentle smile on your face. And bring your attention Entire attention to the area at the entrance of the nostrils. Observe every breath that is coming in. And every breath that is moving out. Incoming breath, outgoing breath, incoming breath. Heart going bad. Continue to observe your breath as it comes in, as it moves out. This is not an exercise in regulating your breath. Just observe your breath as it is. Every time you find that your mind has wandered away, gently, with compassion, bring it back to focus on your breath. Incoming breath, outgoing breath. Let us choose to be compassionate to ourselves. Rather than get frustrated with the tendency of the mind to wander. Wandering of the mind is not a mistake. It is its nature.
continue to breathe. Continue to breathe consciously. There are thousands of breaths we take in a day. For the next couple of minutes, choose to breathe consciously. Pay attention to every breath that comes in, every breath that moves on. Like a watchman, Observe every breath that is coming in and observe every breath that is moving out. Let no breath come in or move out without you being aware of it. Continue to breathe. Breath may be shallow or deep. Maybe coming in from left nostril or right nostril or both the nostrils. We will choose to observe it as it is. In a couple of seconds from now, we'll come to the end of this practice. Continue to breathe. As we come to the end of this practice, you may choose to set an intention that this practice of being mindful will help you and everyone you come in contact with this week. Thank you for practicing with me.
You may choose to keep your eyes closed for a couple of seconds more. And stay with the feeling. And once you're comfortable, you may open up your eyes and share with us how your experience of choosing to be mindful was. Yes, Jokesh. Uh, I think again, um, the thoughts are going to wander based on the routine circle. But consciously bringing them back gives you a lot of uh, space. Like, you know, emptying the vessel is really, really like, you know, is going to be helpful. Yeah. I think it's the first step is to basically consciously be like, you know, on the silent and keep it empty and be focused so very wonderful thank you thank you Jokesh. Shruti you want to share something I felt a complete mental shift like from a lot of things going in my head on Sunday morning there was mm -hmm. complete to-do list I it's just like it's got faded and now I think I have more clarity I, I can choose better what I really want to do today yeah, yeah. I am amazed that in just five to 10 minutes, this major shift has happened, which usually doesn't happen if you try to stop your thinking process. Yeah. But by actually not thinking, things yeah. become clearer. So that's a very a wonderful, point. yeah, that's a wonderful insight, Shruti. And every time we choose to pay attention to what we are doing, you know, the things start becoming clear. And by choosing to pay attention to our breath, you know, even if we do this for one minute every hour, it has a very powerful effect and one can do this multiple times in a day. Absolutely. Thank you. Beautiful practice. Thank you, Shruti. Can, can I share also? Yes, please. Yeah, it's like uh, I was just thinking in terms like suddenly we are going in a highway in a car. Suddenly with this meditation, yes, we are putting brakes to the car, car coming to a standstill and we start enjoying the nature, start mm -hmm. feeling the God and being in the present moment, yeah. which raises our level of consciousness. Absolutely, Dayalji. Very beautifully said. This is the only moment we have. You know, past is gone and future has not come. So this is the only moment we have. And it is in this moment we can make choices. You know, whether we rush through life or we pause and enjoy what we have got. And the more we pay attention to what we have now, to the gifts that we have got, the better our life uh, becomes. So uh, in the present moment, am I choosing to sow the seeds of stress, anxiety, or am I choosing to look at things which are beautiful in my life? You know, and that choice of thought determines the future, determines my future, determines our future. So that's, that's very beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Anybody else would like to share? Sure. Um, I think for me, it was more of a nothingness. Like I, I was able to just think about nothing, but just what the the breath going in outside the nostrils, as you were saying, felt like, I guess, in some ways. And um, yeah, so it was a peaceful, I guess, feeling. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And then zoning out is okay. That's okay. Don't let that bother you. So we, we can choose to pause and pay attention to our thoughts, emotions. And sometimes when I talk about pausing, you know, typically people in the corporate sector are, you know, Ashish, how can I pause? You know, this will make me look stupid. It will make me look dumb. It will make me look slow. But that pausing is like less than a second. You know, it's just bringing your consciousness and awareness to the present moment. And typically our reaction time is actually 18 seconds, you know, so one fifth of a second or one third of a second, whatever. Uh, and so it's that less a time that we are talking about. So just pausing for less than a second, 
and rooting our consciousness to the present helps us respond rather than react, you know. And everywhere in our life, the minute we start bringing this consciousness, uh, you know, it starts impacting the outcomes in our life. Like I was mentioning earlier, whether we're choosing to be stressful, tense, anxious, or we are choosing to be happy, uh, grateful, you know, determines whether our life will go up or down. And that choice is being made moment to moment, you know, moment to moment. Every time your coming to this session is a choice you have made. Like that, you will make a couple of choices during the day. You will make hundreds and thousands of choices during the day. How, however much we can do consciously, the more we can give shape to our destiny, the more unconscious it is, we are at the mercy of the fate, uh, you know, to make those choices. So that is what it is about. I'll pause here to see if you have any questions or comments. And what I would, uh, and then we will look at some useful models, very powerful models that I I have personally chosen to adopt in my life and have paid me rich dividends. But before I share those powerful models, I'll pause here to see if you have any questions or comments. So yeah, she's just for me, for the question that I asked before, I, I guess the mental models you're talking about is how to pause or is that something we can discuss now? That, that'll, that'll, that may help, you know, because these are mental models. Once you start applying in your life, uh, yeah. you will find that things start happening um, different, better for your, and uh, if you think your question is still not answered by the end of it, we'll revisit sure. it again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you like to know these uh, powerful mental models that you can choose? If yes, type BIO in the chat box. Bring it on. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. So these are some very powerful, very useful mental models, uh, which have helped me a lot and which have, these are, let's see them. And this, anybody recognizes this scene from a Bollywood movie? Which movie is this from and what is happening here? Anybody would like to unmute and share? or type in the chat, Divar, Dayalji, Apsi Yomir Neti, Don, Lavares. I think this is from Amar Akbar Anthony. And anybody figure out what he's doing? What is happening in this scene? He's not fixing himself. He's putting a bandaid on the mirror instead. Yes. So uh, in this scene, uh, he is uh, drunk and he's hurt. He has had a fight and he comes back and he's trying to put, you know, he wants to put bandaid on himself, but he lands up putting the bandaid on the, on the person he's seeing in the mirror. And that is how we lead most of our lives, trying to fix the people in our lives, you know. Uh, we don't pay attention to uh, fixing ourselves, but we try to fix our husband, our wife, our boss, our colleagues, our customers, our government, everybody else we try to fix, but not ourselves. And uh, this is a very powerful paradigm where we uh, say that everything that is happening in my life is because of me. Because like what you're seeing in the mirror is the person which is there. So in the life also, what I'm seeing in my life is because of the person I am. Uh, and if I'm sorted out and good and happy, then that's what it's going to express in my world. But if I'm confused, stressed, anxious, then that's what is going to happen in my world. Yatha drishti, tatha shishti. To drishti internal hai. So once we start doing the work, that's why everybody says go inside. Once we start taking responsibility for our thoughts and emotions, we start finding that uh, you know our world outside uh, starts changing and respond. This is also about taking charge and uh, taking responsibility, not being a victim, not thinking that you know my husband is bad, my wife is bad, my this is bad. You know that that's a blame mentality. And whenever we are blaming, we lose power. 
a person who is proactive, who takes ownership, who is a victor or who is a champion, says that person is like that. What is it that I can do in that situation, in this situation? So he's forever trying to do what, focused on what is it that I can do in this situation? Because the man in the mirror has to fix himself. You know, you can't. In this case, you know, th there's no point putting the bandaid on the other person. The hurt is going to remain inside. So you've got to heal yourself from inside. Pay attention to the thoughts and emotions which are inside of us. That's what the whole mindfulness and being awareness of uh, being aware is about. Yes, he is drunk and out of control. And that is how uh, most of us are, uh, you know, because we are not paying attention to our thoughts. And uh, that's why our lives go uh, out of uh, control uh, because we don't know what's going on in our mind. Uh, so that's one. Uh, the second one uh, is a story, uh, which is good thing, bad thing, who knows. Uh, anybody has heard this story earlier from me or anywhere else? Okay, good. This is a very interesting story. And this is about judging things uh, in a short term perspective. And, uh, you know, jumping to conclusions. Our mind is wired to jump to conclusions immediately. And this story goes, this is based in a uh, village in uh, Europe, where there was a very poor villager, uh, very poor farmer who used to live in a village. And uh, he didn't have any uh, horses to till his land. In that village, they used to use horses to till the land. And with some difficulty, he borrowed money and he bought a horse uh, to till the land. But what happens is after a couple of days, that horse breaks away and runs into the jungle nearby. So his neighbors come and say, oh, this is such a bad thing that has happened to you. Uh, anyway, you didn't have money, you borrowed money and now you bought a horse and that horse has run away. How will you till your land? How will you make money? How will you repay the lender? It's such a bad thing that has happened. The farmer was poor, but he was wise. He says, good thing, bad thing, who knows? And uh, sure enough, uh, after some time, you know, this horse which had run away uh, makes friends with other horses in the jungle and come returns with 11 new friends. So now the farmer has got uh, 12 horses. Uh, so initially he didn't have any, then he had one, uh, he lost that, and then he, now he has got 12. So his neighbors are very happy and they come and say, wow, such a good thing has happened. You now have 12 horses. And the farmer says, good thing, bad thing, who knows. And then, you know, these horses were wild uh, who came from the jungle. And his son was trying to ride them, to tame them, to train them. And he fell off the horse and he broke his leg. So the... Uh, can you guess what would have the villagers, the neighbors of the farmer told him? Anybody would like to unmute and chat or put it in the chat? What would have the neighbors of the farmer told him? His son broke his leg. Such a bad thing has happened, right? Uh, your son, young son, he has broken a leg. Such a bad thing has happened. Who's going to marry him now? Uh, you know, and he's, he's going to live like this for the rest of his life. And the, can you guess what the farmer said? God has better plans. Yes, yeah, so something like that. He says, good thing, bad thing, who knows? And soon enough, uh, you know, the kingdom in which this village was goes on a war. Uh, uh, with a neighboring kingdom and the uh, king sends his men to recruit able-bodied men from the village and uh, all the young able-bodied men were uh, taken away by the uh, recruiters and uh, only this uh, uh, farmer's son was spared because he had a broken leg. So the neighbors come crying to him, uh, to this villager saying that uh, you know, our sons have been taken away. We don't know how long the war will last, whether they will live or die, whether we will live or die. We don't know. Your son has been spared. You know, such a good thing has happened. And can you guess what the farmer said? You can type or unmute and speak. Good thing, bad thing, who knows? Who knows? Good thing, bad thing, who knows, right? So this is how our life goes on. Uh, we... 
something which is not pleasant to us happens and uh, then we jump to a conclusion that this is such a bad thing that has happened but then we find uh, that you know maybe it happened for the better and there is one story i would this is a true life story i would like to share with you uh, does this resonate with you have you seen in your life or in lives of your friends or near and dear ones that something happened which you thought was bad uh, but then it turned out to be good later yes yes it happens to all of us and lots of us you know so it's it's important for us to be non judgmental so the mental model that we can choose is to remain equanimous you know whether something is good like the algae get put the e, e plus r is equal to o which is the event in itself you know whether the horse is an a horse running away is an event but the response of the farmer was Uh, is okay you know uh, he was normal good thing bad thing who knows and the outcome is he, he's got 12 times more then his son uh, broke his uh, leg he says he's still equanimous uh, you know he says good thing bad thing who knows and then his son is spared so that's the outcome and every time we choose to remain equanimous we alter the outcomes and you know the future events so that's where lies the power uh, i'll pause here to see if you have any question or comments before we move to the next module and uh, there are some very powerful stories which i can share with you on this one later if the time permits so the next one is uh, 99 gold uh, coins club uh, this is a very beautiful story very simple but with profound uh, learning uh, have you heard this 99 gold coins story if type y for yes no n for no no yes no the algae is type both yes and no no okay good so a lot of you have not heard this story <clears throat> so there was this uh, poor villager and uh, you know he was working very happily uh, he was a farmer working very happily in his field singing songs and uh, you know just working on uh, uh, cutting the crop etc and from there a, the king of that kingdom passes and king has got all the luxuries he has got everything in life but he doesn't have peace of mind and he says this poor farmer he doesn't even have a shirt on his back and he's so happy singing you know what is the reason so the king uh, you know when he reaches back the uh, uh, palace uh, in the evening he calls his minister and says uh, narrates to him that this is what happened i was walking by the country uh, you know i saw this poor farmer he was so poor he didn't even have a shirt on his back but he was singing and enjoying himself and you know really very happy how is that possible i have got everything but i am still worried and uh, you know i am not so happy so the minister was a wise man and minister uh, tells the king that uh, lord he is happy because he is not a member of the 99 gold coin club and king says what what is this 99 gold coin club so then uh, minister tells the king you please arrange for 99 gold coins to be given to me from the treasury and tomorrow morning we will go and i'll show you what happens so uh, he doesn't answer the king directly he takes the king and next day in the morning they go and put this sack outside the uh, farmer's house with 99 gold coins so the uh, farmer gets up in the morning at the uh, break of the dawn he goes out and he sees the sack so as he walking out you know his head uh, leg hit the uh, sack and he realizes there is something so he opens the sack and sees there are gold coins so initially his he was overjoyed you know imagine early in the morning you getting 90 you know a sack full of gold coins and then he sits and starts counting you know 1 2 10 20 50 80 90 99 98 99 99 how is that possible somebody must have made a mistake if somebody had to give they should have given 100 why have they given 99 so he counts again and then he gets his wife to also count then he gets his son to also count it is 99 only all his joy turns into frustration and anger how can somebody give me 99 gold coins the the bloody person should have given me 100 
and then he says tells his wife now we need to make this 100 you know we will work hard and i'll earn more money but we will complete this and make this 100 so he starts working hard you know very hard and as he starts working long hours uh, and then they start saving money uh, anyway they were very poor so they didn't spend what whatever less even less money so you know his wife and son started getting very frustrated and then what the wife got so frustrated one day he she went and sold one of the coins to make some get some money then after a couple of days, this farmer comes back and he say, counts again. He says, now, I have 99 ka 100 of 99 ka 90. So he asks his wife, how is this possible? How has this become 98? So, you know, then the wife says that I went and sold this because I wanted to buy something. Then he, you know, they had a huge quarrel and they started fighting and so on and so on. So, you know, a happy farmer became very miserable. And, uh, you know, that's how the story is. And then, you know, when the king uh, passed, you know, then the minister took the king again. And then, you know, minister, the king saw the farmer working uh, in the field. But this time he's not happy. This time he's not singing the song. He's grumpy. And, you know, he's just doing this as if it's a chore and not enjoying himself. Friends, I'll pause here. And, you know, let's hear from you. What are your takeaways from this very powerful story? I'll urge you to put your cameras on if you're comfortable putting your cameras on. It makes it so much more fun. So I think uh, um, I would like to share over here. Yes. Um, I think it's important that one should take the blessings, whatever they are getting, and enjoy the life yeah. rather than be greedy of what is missing. Yeah. I think we are more worried about what is missing rather than we take the blessings what we have. And Absolutely. we are we should be grateful for that. Absolutely. So I think for me, the lesson is this. Yeah. And maybe for King also. Yes, that's so true. You know, the, thank you for sharing that, Hemlata. You know, in our life, 99 things are going And now let's apply this to our life. There are 99 things which are going on right. You know, the internet for this call, the, for this session to happen, the internet is there, the light is there electricity is there, laptop is working, your laptop, you know, there are 20, 25 people in this call, sabke laptop chal rahe, sabke ghar internet chal rahe. There are 99 things in our lives which are going right. But one thing that doesn't go right completely distracts us. Look at it in terms of relationships, you know. A person, uh, look at it whether husband, wife or colleague or customer, there are nine things good out of that person. One thing which is bad, and it completely, we are always thinking about that one thing that person didn't do for us or that one thing that person said to us. And we completely let that uh, play on our minds and it ruins our happiness and ruins our lives. You know, the important thing is, and there's a very beautiful technique shared by Rhonda Bonds uh, in her book, The Magic. And there she says that... Uh, Anytime you find something like this happening, you replace that, you know, so if there is a person who did not do something for me or said something to me, replace it by saying, however, and then you go back and look at all the good things that that person had said or done for you. So replacing that with however is a very, very powerful technique. I, have, I practice this regularly and I find that it immediately changes my mood and helps me stay positive during the day. Uh, and we can we can do this as many number of times as required, uh, but that's that's very powerful. Sorry, can you just re-explain that? I, I didn't quite follow the however bit. Yeah, so you know, I'll just share one example. You know, my wife. This was just after uh, after the first phase of COVID. The hotels had just opened up, and you know, we took a holiday. We went out, and we stayed in a hotel where the uh, property was good, the food was good, but the service was not good. And you can understand if the service is not good, you know, you call for something and they take like hours to come or, you know, too much time to come. It just spoils the, uh, you know, the mood. And I was getting irritated. Uh, and then, but I thought, however, uh, you know, the, uh, the hotel is good. However, we have been able to have this holiday, you know, COVID ke baad, itne samay baad nikle, hum nikal to pae, itne samay to ghar sahi lockte. So, however, it is good. However, the uh, food is good, you know, service may be bad, but however, the good. So, you just replace it with something which is good that is happening, you know, rather than stay entangled in something which is negative in the present situation. 
Can I share a minute to this thing, one story, a real life experience? Yeah, yes, See, yes. Two, two things we are forgetting. One is like contentment like and the gratitude, of course. Yeah. Like in uh, uh, Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, Shruti Ji has conducted a workshop and there were two factors where one was Santosha and one was uh, Ishwar Pranidhaya. So these were very uh, educative. And one live example, my colleague, I'll take a minute. My, my yes, colleague, yes. he went to Hong Kong. He played in casino. He's alive. He told, he told us exactly. And he started with $10 casino. So he followed the leader over there, one lady who was experienced. He was following her. Can you believe he earned 10 lakhs rupees? Correct. <laughs> then that lady quietly uh, took the money and went away. But he said, let me try one $10 extra. And can you believe me? At the end of the day, he just brought ten dollars back to his home. <laughs> it, it's just in the greediness of getting more, and he lost yeah. everything what he earned. This is a live example. My colleague, I can name him also. Yeah. So he still keeps remembering that thing. Uh -huh. So it's not what the if he he was quite content before going, but he was very frustrated after getting out of that casino. You know, they see that amount of uh, uh, difference it made to him. Yeah, yeah. And even in KBC, we saw one person earning uh, almost to the tune of uh, 25 lakhs. He was in the question of 50 lakhs. Yeah. But he was so confident that he lost and he went back to 80,000 rupees. Imagine the lifetime he will be having the regrets. Yeah. So it's better, somehow I feel it's better not to be in that position only. <laughs> Yeah, no, that and is we'll be contented what we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. so that is a little different, Dayalji. Okay. Here the point is we be satisfied with what we have got, you know, whether it is in terms of people, whether in terms of uh, positions uh, or the position. And when we appreciate what we have got, it appreciates more in our life, you know, rather than living our Yeah, yeah, but this life. is in relation to that 99 club. Like he was quite content, he was quite satisfied. You don't need to go through all those hassles of the business and earning and creating so many things. He was, but moment he got that 99, the life changes completely. Yes, true. Uh, thank you. Uh, there is a very uh, long question from... Uh... Uh, Ankur, Ankur, uh, uh, let me complete the models and with them we'll be happy to, I would like request you to unmute yourself and ask a question so that we can discuss that. Any any quick comment on the 99 gold coins, any takeaways for anybody, any realizations uh, before we move on? Okay. Hi Ashish, Darshna uh, here. <clears throat> Sorry for my bad throat, that's the reason I wasn't speaking. No yes, the story from 99 coin actually i missed it because i was on the other call <clears throat> but i think it was uh, was this the story about the king passing by the forest and was that so yeah 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 great great so yeah so basically uh, you know what happens is uh, our human tendency what we have is like we are never happy with what we have we are never satisfied. And as you said, you know, we don't look at that 99 things what we have, yeah. but we always see to that one thing what is missing in our life. That's true. And that actually distracts us. And, you know, uh, unconsciously, you move towards or you take that choice where you actually don't need to. Where you are, you are actually happy. So when you try to search happiness in any form, we need to analyze ourselves, our inner self first. And when we in, an, analyze ourselves, I think we have wow. everything and we should be having that gratitude, that blessings, what you said, yes, the blessings should be counted rather than disguise. So yes, that was my takeaway and it was a lovely story. Thank you. And actually, I would just add on is the session is very much value added. So thank you for making the Sunday. Thank you, Krishna. Really yes. appreciate your inputs. Uh, we will move on to the next one, which is uh, also another very powerful uh, mental paradigm, which is about being a giver. And there is a uh, small story from Buddha's life, which I would like to share. Uh, Gautam Buddha uh, was a monk, and you know he would uh, uh, the monk as monks do, he would go to the nearby village and beg for food. And he was uh, doing his morning rounds with another uh, junior monk along with him. And uh, they come to a house uh, and they, you know, stop there and say, Bhikshan Dei. And the lady of the house, uh, you know, they didn't have anything to give that day. And she felt very kind of ashamed that we don't have anything to offer to the monk. 
and uh, she asked her young daughter to go out and tell uh, Buddha that we don't have anything to give today. And uh, the girl uh, comes out, you know, small girl, six, seven years. She comes out and she says, uh, you know, today we don't have anything to give. And uh, Buddha say, you know, just uh, points her and says, stop, stop. You see that dirt lying on the floor? Uh, why don't you pick up and give it to me? And so the girl picks up the dirt and puts it in the uh, bowl where, in which they had all the food. And, uh, you know, the, so she put, puts the dirt and she happily goes inside because she is given something, you know, typically when we give something, we feel happy. So she happily goes inside and, you know, the Buddha calmly starts walking away from there. But his uh, disciple is like seething with anger. Anchor, could you please unmute? Unmute so uh, the, the the junior monk the uh, is like seething with anger. He says, "Buddha, what have you done? We anyway didn't have much to eat, and now you have asked this girl to put dirt on it. So whatever little we had, we can't eat now." And what Buddha said changed my life, and I get emotional when I share this. He said, "You know what we have lost is food for one day." But the lesson that girl has learned will help her in a lifetime. And the lesson is you always have something to give. You always have something to offer. When I heard this story for the first time, I have recorded a video also on this. And I'll, if you want, I can share that video. Or you can go up, look in the YouTube library of Mindful Living. Giver's Gain is a video I have recorded. When I heard this story, I was going through a very tough phase in my life. I had no bank balance. My checks were bouncing. And, you know, in that situation, the thought of giving doesn't arise. But then, you know, taking inspiration from this uh, story, I started offering smiles to the people. You know, in the lift, when I would come up and go, go up and down, you know, I would, whoever I see, I would offer them a smile. Then I started putting out water uh, for the birds. And uh, one thing led to the other. And uh, I be started becoming more and more of a giver. You know, when I started going for my meetings, rather than ask for business, uh, you know, rather than beg for business, I would go with the confidence, what is it that I can do for you? What is it that I can give you? And that completely changed my paradigm of operating. You know, I was not asking anybody anything. I'm saying, what is it that I can offer you? What's the problem you have? How can I solve it for you? And that approach, you know, people can sense that you're not coming as a, uh, you know, taker, you're coming in as a giver. And that completely transformed my life. And, you know, I have not looked back uh, since then. Year on year, uh, some of you, uh, you know, so, we have now incorporated mindful living as a company. So, you know, we are going to the next level. Some of you are investing, you know, we have reached out and had those conversations. People are coming in, we are, they are investing in our company. We are going to the next level of growth. So from a couple of years back when I didn't have money in my bank uh, to honor my checks to now today where I'm doing fundraise and people are coming in from UK, Singapore, everywhere and investing in mindful living. You know, the, completely different story and it's not my story you look at the universe everything in the universe is giving the sun gives its light and they all give unconditionally sun never comes and asks you look at the trees you know the trees which bear fruits you just go and take mango you take papaya you take a man banana the tree never asks you what are you giving me you look at mother earth she just keeps giving uh, look at everything you know the nature is abundant and giving nature doesn't ask you what you're giving me it just keeps giving so when we get into that mode of offering and you know when i start about talk about giving one of the pushbacks is yaar main ja, de dunga to main loot jaunga I'm saying you give whatever you're comfortable with, whether in relationships, whether it is with money or whatever else, you give whatever you can. Don't 
you don't have to become a doormat i'm not asking you to become a doormat i'm not asking you to become a people pleaser but have that attitude of being a giver because when you start having that attitude of being a giver your entire personality changes your mindset changes and that's also a choice we make you know what's the mindset i am having am i having the mindset of a taker or i am having a mindset of a giver and from the personal example and from the story from the universe you know you can look at the universe you can look at the nature and get inspired the nature is always giving us all the uh, look at the tata group you know they are such givers they are giving and they are prospering you know the, they're just prospering and prospering and prospering so i'll pause here to see if you have any questions and comments before we move on to the next one thank you jogesh thank you anybody would like to share oh, we, we i didn't realize we are past our time uh, are you okay with the time are you okay to continue or should we just bring this to a close uh, have a quick discussion and bring this to a close i think we are okay it's sunday so <laughs> <laughs> i i am very conscious today i lost track of the time so the other one is uh, you know uh, choosing our purpose uh, last evening i was coaching i had a coaching session with someone a very senior uh, industry professional has been in the industry for over 25 years and uh, you know we were having a conversation on developing his purpose uh, you know imagine you go someone going through a career for 25 years not knowing what the purpose and and he is not an isolated case many of us in our lives uh, including i myself i didn't have a purpose uh, like uh, i remember asking uh, having a conversation with my wife couple of years ago am i successful uh, you know because how do you evaluate what do you evaluate against you know because i didn't have a purpose then i i uh, you know i just did my bcom i did my cost accountancy i did my mba i joined the corporate rat race did well and just went on with life you know without being aware of what i actually want out of my life so it's very important for us to identify the purpose uh, we have and uh, that is important pay attention ask ourselves why am i here why why am i doing what i am doing and once we have that clarity you know once we choose our purpose there is lot of things that start happening in our life and the last one is uh, choosing to sharpen our saw and i am really grateful to you for taking out time today morning to come for this session and sharpen your saw there are four dimensions of human existence one is physical which is uh, our body the another one is intellectual which is our cognitive ability our mental abilities the third one is social and the fourth is spiritual as you keep taking out time to invest in exercising your mind reading books i talked about books and people reading books investing in your learning which is what all of you are doing uh, clarifying your purpose which is spirituality for me spirituality is clarifying your purpose you know identifying the connect with people that we have uh, and connecting with the so the social being sp social spiritual those are the dimensions of life and as we consciously invest in these uh, facets our life keeps improving uh, you know i was having a conversation with the uh, uh, with another senior executive and uh, uh, you know he was saying my boss should understand me you know and uh, I, the conversation i was having with him is you need to invest time in helping your boss and under, understanding your boss rather than expect that your boss is going to understand you and same thing same analogy would apply in our lives you know Uh, husband thinks wife should understand uh, uh, him uh, wife thinks husband should and we don't take time in investing we don't invest time in understanding each other but we expect the other person to understand whether it is boss subordinate or whatever else so take that time to invest in your health invest in your intellectual capabilities invest in your relationships invest in clarifying your purpose and as you choose to invest this time uh, into these uh, dimensions of your existing your life keeps getting better and better and your you know your life is an upward virtuous circle always so on that note friends we bring the discussion today to a close i'll be happy to hear your thoughts your questions your comments uh, on on this topic so i guess ashish i'll just ask the question that i asked earlier right so a yes. lot of things of course are 
in in a in a present moment where nothing no situation is is abreast right it's academically obviously very easy to follow any of these examples and and uh, want to or aspire to be there but i guess in the moment right where a bad situ bad situation happens i mean of course until you get to that farmer's approach which is what is a bad situation whether it's bad or, or good how do you get your mindset so for me personally for example i react in two seconds right i feel like somebody's doing something bad or like that somebody's saying something bad or like i'm a victim or whatever it is and there's a whole almost immediate automatic reaction so when you say said earlier 18 seconds or whatever i was like for me it's not even an 18th of a section a second right so how do you get from the academic today to the actual in place tomorrow yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very beautiful question and i think it'll help many people See, there is a uh, saying in the army, uh, you, you sweat in peace so that you bleed less in war. So the practice actually happens, uh, you know, during the day when or during the times when you are not being tested. And when you are tested, then you are prepared to it. Uh, you know, bear that or handle that situation. So army doesn't, uh, you know, the javans in the army or the soldiers or the officers spend a lot of time uh, uh, on their fitness, on their practices when they are not at war. So when they are at war, you know, when the war situation comes, they're prepared for it. Similarly, in our life, you know, whether it is a situation of anger management or reacting, we need to practice to be present. And when we practice to be present by focusing on our breath, which is one of the ways to do it. There are many other ways, but this is one of the uh, easiest ways I find or practical ways. When we practice uh, being aware of our breath, so because breath is the first place where the change uh, in our emotions reflect. So if I'm angry, you know, my breath would typically become shallow or I would start huffing and puffing. So once I am practicing observing my breath, you know, when that moment comes where there is an emotional uh, outburst or potential for emotional outbursts, my breath will start becoming shallow or it will start becoming faster. And because I have practiced observing my breath, I'll become aware and, you know, I'll be in a position to uh, hold myself back. And that's how it happens. So you practice in peace so that you bleed less in war. Does that help, uh, Shamil? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ankur had a question. Ankur, are you there? Yes, Ankur is there. Yeah. Good morning, Ankur. Good morning. Yeah. Yes, tell me. Ankur, uh, whatever you told me, that was really uh, what, like uh, what you told to the previous uh, people. Uh, uh, what uh, I have realized is I am an army guy, and I have got some time now. I am in reputation in some peace profession. So I am able to connect uh, uh, to you, sir. But like, आपकी आवाज clear नहीं आ रही है अंकुर। आह okay sir। आप क्या नहीं बोल रहे हो? Yeah, now now it's completely gone. Let me try reading your question. Uh, our childhood learning methods are not based on mindfulness. Yes, they are not. They are more because of our teachers and parents push. Yes, that is that is what we are trying to change by bringing our uh, uh, function from state of. Yes, that so we live our lives quite mindlessly. That is what mindfulness is about: becoming aware. And uh, there are some things which we can't change. Like I was sharing the example of a global CFO uh, who uh, chose yes, uh, commerce because uh, you know his art teacher told him you're not good at drawing, so he didn't go into biology because that involved making a lot of drawings. Uh, so he, rather than becoming a doctor, which he wanted, he became uh, commerce because of the feedback which was given. You know, so. Um, so those kind of things you can't change now, uh, but wherever else, you know, we can bring our consciousness to and whatever we can choose, uh, we should uh, do that. 
uh, how can we move from mindfulness to soulfulness? See, once you start becoming aware of your thoughts and emotions, uh, you know, thoughts live in our mind, emotions live in our body, you start becoming overall aware. And then soulfulness to me is about being clear on your purpose, why we are here. And, you know, once we start getting clarity on that, you know, then you, when you start asking yourself, so each thing will lead to the next one. Uh, so as you keep asking those questions, you are becoming aware. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Ankur. Ashish, can I add something here? Yes, please, Darshan. Yeah. So, you know what? Basically, I think each one of us should have our why very clear. If we are very clear with our why or the clarity of purpose, what we call actually in our language, I think most of the answers we get from us and probably for that, uh, you know, uh, Ashish is there to coach us and to help us. And I think uh, that is how we, a person may need a coach or a mentor to guide, to lighten up your success path. So if you, if, in any of the stage, when we are stuck, we need to analyze and ask ourselves, why is this so? What am I going to get if I want to move from mindfulness to soulfulness? What is soulfulness for me? And if I have those clarity, I can understand what is, is it a mindfulness I am in this stage? Or am I actually a soulful, but yet I'm searching a soulfulness for me? So, yeah, that was just my opinion and my thoughts, so, which I share. Thank you. Thank you, Darshan. Uh, so, friends, uh, thank you for your positive feedback on the chat. What I would also request you to do is, uh, in your mindful respect, the three mindful, mindful living groups we have, Mindful at Work, Leaders, and uh, Mindful Living, please share your takeaways in those respective groups uh, so that more people will benefit for them. And taking this time out to reflect and share your takeaways entrenches your learning. So it will benefit you more. It will benefit you. It will benefit everybody else. Uh, also, I would like to share the coming weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday, we will not have any session as I am undergoing a training myself uh, for three days on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So there will be no session in the following uh, weekend. And uh, third is keep sharing uh, about the sessions we do with your friends. Uh, we don't spend any money uh, on advertisements uh, consciously, and that's a conscious choice we have made not to advertise, uh, but to let the word of mouth spread. And, you know, when you only if you like what we are doing, share it with your friends, because that's our bit to make the world a healthier, happier and better place. We all like the uh, you know world to be better, but what is it that uh, we can do to do uh, make that uh, better place is by sharing about the work we are doing. And in that process, everybody becomes better, everybody becomes happier, and we also become happy. So on that note, thank you very much for joining the session today. If there are any unanswered questions, I'll be happy to be here for a couple of minutes more and take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ashishji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, thank you, uh, Ashishji. If you if you can share some offline, some good, wonderful books, which can, like you know, as you said, we need to invest. If something yeah. which you really find like you no know, pearls of wisdom, please do share. Sure, sure. There's some of the books that I have personally benefited a lot from. Uh, there are a few. One is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, mm -hmm. Be Magic. Uh, then there is. Uh, the Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer, and Zero Limits by Dr. Joe Vitale. Uh, even if you have not been able to write them down, you can always watch the recording and make a note of these. And there's Thank a you. whole lot of videos previous on which we keep referring as and when time permits and whatever sessions which we missed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dayalji. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashish. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you, can awesome. thank you. Say bye. On the thank way. you, Ashish. Bye bye. Thank, thank, you. You. Bye -bye. thank you, Ashish. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you can watch the recording to get the names of the books. <laughs>